Hey, Andy here from buildahottub.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do if you've got water in your air blower. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so if you've got water in your air blower, then you have a problem because we all know that water and electricity doesn't mix. So if you've got water in your air blower, then the chances are it's tripping the breaker on your hot tub. Likewise, if you're wondering why the breaker is tripping when you try to turn on the blower, then the chances are it's got water in it. Now, Firstly, before we get going, it's always a great point in the video to say, please do subscribe to the channel. Any comments, please hit me up in the comments underneath this video. If you've liked it, give me a thumbs up. And of course, hit that notification button so that you don't miss when my videos go live. I put two long form videos out every week and a whole bunch of shorts as well. So there's loads and loads of free content on the channel that goes out every single week, all about hot tubs, plunge pools that you're gonna build yourselves. So if we've got water in the blower, it's gonna trip the breaker, it's a problem, so what do we do? Well, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is obviously get the water out of the blower. It's not rocket science. How do we do it? Well, I always recommend that you actually take the blower out of the system. So you're gonna to need to unscrew the front of it and take it off the pipework. And then you're also gonna to need to disconnect that uh, white connector, it's often called a, an AMP connector, a lock and may or a Molex, depending on uh, where you are in the world, it has a different name. You're gonna need to unplug that from the spar pack so that you can take the blower out in its entirety. And at that point, tip out any water that's in there and then go and put it in a nice warm place for a couple of days so it can thoroughly dry. So ideally somewhere like the airing cupboard or next to your boiler, it's just a really good way of thoroughly drying out the unit and it's gonna help prevent it from rusting. Because the last thing you want is if that unit rusts, then the chances are it's gonna break down inside and it's gonna fail electrically and you're gonna have more issues with breakers tripping and, and that kind of a thing. So once it's thoroughly dried out, then you can look at putting it back onto the system. But before we do that, we've got to kind of think, how did water get in there in the first place? So somewhere on your blower lines will be a check valve. So this is a, a valve, which is a one-way valve. When the blower is running, it forces the valve open to allow air flow through. When the blower stops, it closes up. And the idea of this check valve is to keep water out of the system. However, what can happen over time is that either the rubber seals can break down on the check valves, or more commonly, you can get a buildup of, of dirt and of, of particles that then stop the actual valve from closing properly, okay? And when you get that, the water that ends up in those lines will pass through into the blower and it's a problem. So the first thing that you can actually do is change the check valve. And, and that often solves the, uh, the problem. Certainly on the plastic shell tubs, that, that isn't a problem at all. You can change it and it will be just fine. Now on our custom made or DIY built hot tubs, there could be a, a slightly different problem. And that different problem can be the weight of the water head on those airlines. And it just means that the check valve alone isn't strong enough to keep that water out. So what do I mean? Well, what you can do is you can look for a stronger spring inside of the check valves. So they come and they, they often have a spring rating in pounds. Um, you can have a quarter pound spring. If you have a larger spring, it forces that valve closed uh, a, a lot more. However, it can reduce the amount of airflow to your jets. So be mindful, if you do increase the check valve spring tension, then you could reduce the amount of air going into the system. So how does water get in there in the first place? Well, actually our airlines and our water lines on a hot tub are connected and they're connected inside of the jet body. So where you put those jets, whether it's a self-built or whether it's a plastic shell tub, it's exactly the same. The water lines and the airlines, they mix. And the reason that they do is it increases the jet power and it also increases what I call the bubbliness or the, you know, the hot tub effect that you expect with your hot tub. So the way that it works is water is coming out of the 
front of the jet there's a, a, a small hole on the top of the uh, the jet body that allows air to be drawn in with a venturi effect from the blower and that increases the power and increases the bubbles so you've got that little hole inside of those bodies so when you turn off the pump and you turn off the blower water obviously settles at its lowest point and it can if those jets are below the water line which they generally are that water will pass into the airlines. So why is this a problem? Well, on our DIY built tubs, you can often have a large amount of water above those jets and that head height becomes too much for the check valve. The check valve just can't keep the pressure of water out and that's how water ends up into the blower. So what can we actually do to stop this? Well, the first thing that we could do is we can actually move the blower so that it is above the water height. So we're actually relying on gravity to keep the water out of the blower. If it's above the water line of your hot tub, then it's not going to be possible for that water to enter the blower. Now, this isn't always possible and quite often our control rooms are, are under the water line, which is perfect, which is what I recommend in, uh, in my designs. All of the designs in the online store all have a control room that is below the water line. So what else can we do? Well, what we can do is we can put in what is called a Hartford loop. This is what a Hartford loop looks like behind me. And the layout that we have is we have the blower, we've got that check valve in front of the blower, and then we've got a loop of pipe which actually goes up and above the waterline. How does that work? Well, what it means is we're using gravity to keep the water from passing from one side of the pipe that you can see to the other. It can't go across because gravity is, is holding it down. So what we do is we're actually using physics to keep the water out of our blower by putting in that Hartford loop and that can then work in conjunction with the check valve as a, an additional safety measure, but it means that water can't pass over that loop because it's just simply not possible. So if you are struggling with a blower that is continually getting water in, you've tried changing the check valve, you've tried putting in a stronger spring, the next step I would suggest is putting in a Hartford loop. Now it's always good practice if you're building your DIY hot tub from scratch that you put one of these in to start with, uh, but you can add one retrospectively as well. As always, I appreciate the view. I hope you found this short video useful. If you have, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for the watch, and I will see you on the next video. If you've liked this video, please do like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you on the next video.